Do you know the medical business is a profitable business in Africa? And have you ever wondered why so many people are not into this business? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Business in Africa talk show here on the Business in Africa YouTube channel. As you know, I usually come here with someone who is an expert. She's been doing this for some time now. And we are going to be talking about the medical business. It's not just the medical business. It's kind of like an NGO. But believe me, she's doing something great. She's really, really, really taking care of Africa. And that's what we come here all the time to do, right? We showcase people who are rewriting the African script and changing the African narrative. So if you're new here, just make sure you join the family by clicking on the red subscribe button below and also turn on notification bell so that each time we upload a new video, you will be the first to know. Don't move a muscle. I'll be right back after the break. With me in the studio right now is a young lady who I would say, I mean, she's kind of like doing something that's really, really big. And uh, it's no order, but Dennis and Janga. Put your hands up. <laughs> now, I really like to hear people who do who are doing things like what you're doing. Sincerely, you caught my attention online and I really started reading your CV as the UN uh, Peace Ambassador, the, you know, a lot of things on your CV. Please, can you just tell us a little about you and your background and what you do? Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's an honor to be on set with you today. So my name is Benis Nechang Anjanga, as you rightly mentioned. And I am a health preneur. <laughs> you are a health preneur that is an entrepreneur in the in health, the health sector. sector. Exactly. Right. So, um, apart from the fact that I am a UN Peace Ambassador, I am also a Global Goodwill Ambassador. Yes. I am Israel, Israel Entrepreneur Technology um, Ambassador. So, we have received a couple of recognitions from both the Cameroon government and um, the private sector of Cameroon from the transfigura transfigurational um, initiative. We received an award as the best NGO of the year 2020. Wow. From the Cameroon government, we received an award as the best health institution, Cameroon wow. Heroes Award, wow. and the best anti-COVID institution, Cameroon wow. Heroes Award. Wow. So that is that is an introduction of who I am, basically. <laughs> That's basically, you, you, you just talked about your awards and, you know, the things that you've done. But who is Benis? Do we know? I mean, like, I personally want to know a little bit about you. Too. Oh, wow. Benis is um, a, a health enthusiast. Mm -hmm. And I am actually a senior nurse, according to Cameroon government qualifications. Okay. And I, I mean, I went through the nursing school, St. Louis Institution of Health and Biomedical Sciences. Right. And after which I worked in the hospital as a senior nurse and as a surgical nurse before coming to start the Way Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. I come from a regular African family. Mm -hmm. Yes, my father has six children wow. and one wife. Great. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that is the founder of Zoe Health Foundation. We are going to be learning so much about the medical business from her and how this works. Now, you just talked about um, the Zoe Foundation. Why, why did you decide to use the name Zoe? Not Zoe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Actually, um, I am a child of God. I'm born again. So when, when I came to discover the depth of God, I heard about Zoe, which actually is the is a, is a life of God that is the eternal life, the life that knows no, no boundaries, no sickness, no poverty. I mean, the life of God replicated into us. So I looked around and I saw that there were so many sick people. In Africa, the, one of the easiest excuses that people use is that I am sick. I couldn't come to work because I was sick. I couldn't do this because... But according to the word of God, we are not supposed to be sick at all. So Zoe Health Foundation is a complete package of both mental, physical, psychological, financial health to the people. Wow. So you give, if, I, if I come that uh, financially I'm sick, you're going to help me? I'm going to definitely help you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, why, why did you choose 
um, NGO in the line of medical business. Are there other businesses that um, someone can do opportunities in the medical field that you can advise? Yes. And, you know, going to the medical school, my, my highest dream was to travel to the U.S. And be a nurse in the US. Right. Oh, I still love that. Like so many other Africans. <laughs> yes. So what what held you back? I tried actually, and then I didn't succeed. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy you stayed back on the African I'm also continent happy. To, to to change Africa. I'm so happy. Exactly, I am. Um, that's one of the highest, the best no's I received. Wow. Because it got me to to look inside and and you know wow. there, there is something you really want to do. Right. The place does not really matter. My question was, what are the other, other opportunities okay. inside, um, the, the, as, as, a, as a healthpreneur, mm -hmm. um, inside the health or the medical you know, industry? Okay. So, apart from starting up a clinic, which um, a lot of people do, you could start up a school to train nurses. Okay. You could start up, um, you could start buying. Most of our equipments are imported from, from abroad. In Cameroon, there's actually no reliable um, institution that produces equipment. Yet we use equipment every day in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people um, or people can actually start importing instruments and selling. Apart from that, um, there is also the opportunity of starting up um, like one of because of the, this particular difficulty. I thought this was a good idea to start teaching or raising health marketers. Because healthcare has not really been marketed in, in our country. Wow. So, because a lot of people are used to the traditional means of health, but then yeah. it's time for us to disrupt the traditional things because mm. things are not really going the way they used to go in those days. So, I think that a healthcare marketing system as a business will sell. Well, that, what, what, what does that contain? Like, because this should be something very new mm -hmm. or something kind of like your idea. Mm -hmm. When you say a healthcare marketer, what does that mean? A healthcare marketer should, is somebody that should be able to market not only the products because in the hospitals we have delegate medicals mm -hmm. these people that sell health products mm -hmm. but then what about an institution where they train people to be able to to market the whole idea of maybe that is uh, maybe a clinic mm -hmm. for example we just launched into bonaberry and i've been looking you know around for a marketer mm -hmm. somebody or a, an institution or you know something that can be able to market us mm -hmm. in Bonaberry mm -hmm. health wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of marketers exist, but, but they're, 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 they're not, not health people. Yeah, they're not health they're not oriented. Exactly. To speak the health language. The health language, exactly. Right. So I think that that's 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 a good niche that for somebody, somebody to, to, go. To, to go into. So you guys, I told you that if you're watching my <laughs> show, you will go home with something good, with a new idea. Believe me, I'm a consultant in Africa. And when I talk about businesses that people can do, I've hardly talked about this. So I'm also learning something new here today. So healthcare marketing is, or health marketers, like people in the medical field who can market medical products and services is something that is needed on the African continent. So if you're watching me right now, uh, probably you're a marketer and looking for a niche, then think about this niche. Um... And that already, you have, I mean, you're already introducing me to my next question, which is, which are the challenges that you face in this kind of business. Uh, I'm sure that is already one. So, <laughs> like finding marketers exactly. to sell your, to yeah. sell the, the clinic. Mm -hmm. So, what are the other challenges that um, one can face in the medical field? Okay, you mean a healthpreneur? Yeah. So, apart from visibility, which a health marketer can handle, we, we, we have um, a team, a dedicated team. Most people who get into the health um, domain are planning to finish and travel abroad. So even when you try, you get to recruit somebody, you know, they are just there so that they can raise enough money to travel abroad. Right. So as soon as they have that, they, they, are, they gone. are gone. So now you, you, you are reluctant. You don't want to really invest into that person because... Tomorrow they may just be gone, just like the others have come and gone. Mm -hmm. So there's this particular difficulty that I find, you know, trying to trying to, to look for people that will buy your vision mm -hmm. and, and run with it. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be somebody that is looking for money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay, apart from that, we had um, challenges, financial challenges, trying to, you know, grow. You see, starting up a business like this in Africa, just like every other business needs support. 
because especially at the start of it many people don't believe in you how far can you go from a kiosk from a a, a you know drug kiosk into a clinic you you are definitely going to need support and because depending on how you know the family you're coming from mm -hmm. where they are you know in africa the family always supports mm -hmm. You, you, you could also just maybe get stranded if you don't have a I'm family bad. that can support you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I think that if there's an institu institution that can support these kind of ideas, we'll get more people out there so like that's that. A challenge, yeah. that. Yes. That's a challenge, yeah. That's a challenge for us, yeah. So, are there any other challenges? Yes. Mm, yes. We, we sometimes run into um, trouble with the government officials especially those into um, tax and all of that. Mm -hmm. So normally for you to start up this kind of business in Africa, you must be a health professional. For you to, to, for you to own a clinic in Africa, you must be yourself um, somebody that is into, into health care. So thank God I am one. But then sometimes they still come around and even though I am qualified, mm -hmm. They still want to, want you know, to, to squeeze more than yes. <laughs> the they just, more. yes, they just create mm -hmm. a document that doesn't exist, and then you 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 have yeah. to pay for it with yeah. money. That that has really been challenging some um, so oh, far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so okay. yeah, but so far so good. So far so good. How many workers do you have right now? How many people are you employing? Okay, so right now we are employing seven people. Wow. It was eight, but one person resigned last month. All right. So this month ends. She, she doesn't I probably know. went to the US. Eh? She's working on documents, <laughs> yeah, as if you knew. <laughs> right. Yes, but then okay. we, we have um, 35 volunteers. 35 volunteers yes. and eight permanent workers. Yes. And your branches are in uh, Bonaberry? And... We have a branch in Bonaberry, we have a branch in Yasa, and we have a branch in Bongo. Bongo is an IDP camp just after Yasa, okay. not too far from Yasa. All right. Yes. Wow. And about how many patients do you receive all over your branches in a day or so? Well, if you want to put it in a day, it may not really work with healthcare. In a, in a, in in a, a month, week, in it's a month. better. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in the last three months, we have been able to receive up to and above 200 patients per month. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that, that will lead me to my next question, right? Um, you are still a very young graduate. I don't know, did, when you finished school, did you work before yes. some of this? You worked yes. for some time. Mm -hmm. All right. How were you able to raise finance to start this kind of business or this kind of, this line of activity? Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> the job that I got was just enough to take care of my needs. And I, I had the passion of taking care of people. people. And I was not able to, with the salary I got, take care of extra people. Each time I did that, they were cut from my salary. So I wanted to go above above that. So I I stopped that job and I started selling granite. You started selling granite? Yes. Like popping granite on the street. Exactly. Wow, this must be a humble beginning. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah, so I started hawking granite. Um, I, I grew, it grew so fast. Mm -hmm. I started with gran fried granite. Then I went to Granos Suites, and my, my junior sisters were in secondary schools. So when they are going to school, I put some granola in their back to go and sell in school. So when mm -hmm. they come back, they bring the money. And then I was also selling sugar cane. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just looked for a need. I really here in Douala? Yes, here in Douala. Okay. I wanted to sell something that would pass very fast, so that I can make enough money to start my business. Yes, and so, but then I kept waiting for the money, waiting for the, ah, one day, I just decided to start already and launch into the medical field, which I master better. Yes. Yes. So I started my business with 30,000 francs. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's about $60. Exactly. 30,000 francs yes. 30,000 francs yes. And that 30,000 francs, I used 15,000 francs to buy what I needed to, re to resell and make money from it. And 15,000 francs, I used it for charity. So the fifteen thousand how did you buy for fifteen thousand francs? Paracetamol, wound dressing material. Okay. Because you see, it is not about selling the drugs. For me, I what is really expensive in medical health is is the, the service. Exactly. The care. Yes. Yeah. So you can actually see yourself, maybe you want to dress a wound, but just because ah, 
imagine dressing a horrible wound. It's just you are not the person is not really paying for the things you are going to be using because it's you can use it. That, that yeah, passion. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Even That's though it's fifteen thousand francs I started with, but at the end of the month I had two hundred and fifty thousand francs. The same month. The same month. Guys, can you imagine how profitable <laughs> that is? And fortunately, we have so many nurses that are graduating on a daily basis and they are just there saying, I don't have the capital to get started. This is what I always say on this show. And you are a living example for that. You yes, know, um, you can start with as little as 30K. Mm -hmm. If you're a nurse, just start dressing the wounds and, you know, making the money. Yeah. Wow. Keep the shame away. You know, it's humiliating. Yeah, yeah. to an extent, right? Yes, because... You know you are working at, because especially in Duala, people will be like, ah, it's a song le, you know, is is this <laughs> is this quack nurses? Yes. Yes, but then you 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 make every encounter remarkable. Right. So I went beyond, you know, getting money from you mm -hmm. to giving you care. It is not because you want to give me one thousand francs. No, it's because after that I expect not only you but every member in your family when she the first pump, is one right. person they should think about and that right. person should be me. So I make every encounter remarkable. And I keep the one client that I have best. It's the best way I can keep them. Customer just so service. that, yes, because because it's better to keep one client than to get 10 clients every day. That will go, yeah. Yes. So, I, of course, I learned how to do these things <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah, and I launched into the market full swing. And then you started selling drugs, and later you had so many kiosks. Like, do you still sell drugs to date? Well, I, I had just one kiosk. One kiosk, okay. Yes. So yes, I was selling medication in in the kiosk, and yes, after that, um, one year after, I got a a place which I rented and made it to become uh, Zoe Health Foundation Yasta. That's I'm our see. no I mean, clinic. The, the, the clinic. Yes. All right. So that's um that's our medical that's our, our head brand. Yes. Head headquarters. Headquarters exactly. Right. So immediately we got there, like people were waiting. It's just like they were they were asking themselves. But what is this girl doing here? Immediately we got into that place. The first week, in fact, the first day we had a surgery. Oh my God. Yes, we had a surgery. And after that surgery, the woman whose son was sick, she's the one that became our marketer. Thank God. Now she was just spreading the news. She went everywhere with the news. This girl is unbelievable. They are this, they are that, they are caring. At the end of the day, it was more. It was not even like how competent are you? Because yeah. sometimes we make mistakes as medical practitioners. But then, how you handle it, how you handle your patients, yes, that's what that's what really you know. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you guys are learning something that's really great. We are learning, or we are getting the experience you went through and learning from her journey. Now, before we come to the end of the first section of the show. Um, you are an entrepreneur. Uh, I mean, from start, from selling granite to right up to now having seven major feminine employees and 35 volunteers. This is a big journey. How long did this all happen? Over how much days? Time, time. I started on the 5th of August 2018. So it's just over barely three years. Exactly. That you've achieved all of this. Yes, sir. Child, you get for being as well, hard working girl. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously. Like yes. seriously. But then um I will take you out of your comfort zone a bit a bit, okay? And I just want to find out what are the other businesses that you can advise someone to start apart from medical business. Do you have any like, you know, one or two or three? Do you have any? Agriculture. Me several went for that one. <laughs> Agriculture, the backbone agriculture, of Africa. Agriculture. Right. Yes. Um, I believe so much in agriculture in Africa. Especially because... Do you have a farm? Unfortunately, no. I sell farms. Can you, can you come to me? I'll sell you a farm. <laughs> I would definitely want to go for right. one. Yes. Right. I believe so much in, in, in agriculture. And the, the, the ideas that I gathered from Thailand about agriculture. If I set into the agriculture market, most of those agropreneurs, they will just leave it for me. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, I, were, you were in Thailand, right? Yes, you studied in Thailand. in Thailand. Yes. So you got out some other ideas. What, what, what were these ideas? For example, their watermelon could, could come in shapes. Mm -hmm. A heart-shaped watermelon, wow. a square watermelon. And I know how to do it. They, 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 they put a form on the watermelon. They, they, they. When it starts forming, 
they put it inside a square. Okay, now it, and it now shapes it. up. It shapes up. Ah, okay. Imagine going to the market and see a square watermelon. Won't you just go for it? <laughs> <laughs> right. They have beautiful ideas when it comes to agriculture. Mm -hmm. Beautiful ideas. And we've got the we've got the resources here. In we have the resources, especially the human resources. Mm -hmm. We have them. We we have the good soil. We have all those things that ah. If I get into agriculture, yeah. ah. <laughs> so guys, agriculture is one one very big business opportunity according to the founder of Zoe Foundation. Foundation. Now tell me another one. Education. Yeah, that's yep. another big one. Education. Um, I, I every day, I thank my father for sending me to school, for mm -hmm. educating me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is one thing that Africans have finally understood. It is important to get educated. It is important to get educated. And if you understand, actually, my family has uh, an, an education business. Okay. So they have a primary school that they are running. And right. each time I'm spying that business, I'm like, hey, see money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, probably, probably one day open your own school. Or the yes. Zoe Foundation is planning about that. Yes, um, we have a, a long-term plan to start up a nursing institution to train right. passionate, passionate nurses, nurses that can market, yeah, healthcare. Healthcare. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, guys. I hope you guys have been watching, following up very keenly, mm -hmm. and getting something out of Benny's Achanga. The founder of Zoe Foundation, healthcare, like an NGO, right? So we've come to the end of the first slot or the first section of our show. And you must not go away or navigate away because we are, we are going to be going into the second section, which is Discover Africa, where we shall be finding out if Benny's Ajanga right here knows her continent by asking her some very, very nice questions about Africa. And I'm sure you're going to learn something from that as well. So stay right there. Don't move a muscle. I'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, Africa. Welcome back to the show. Right here with me is still Miss Benis Adjanga, the CEO or founder of Zoe Foundation. Right now, we are going to the second section, which is Discover Africa. And we are going to be finding out how much she knows about her continent, which is Africa. The continent that she didn't want to leave to another place. She decided to stay back here. So are you ready for this? I'm ready. You're ready? Mm -hmm. Let's start. So you're going to pick 10 questions from this basket. And I will ask the question. So you just pick it out and give it to me. Let's go. Are you going to have this correct? Yes, I'll have all 10 correct. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Question number one. This former Italian colony was integrated with Ethiopia in 1952. Name it. A. Eritrea. B. Kenya. C. Tanzania. And D. Malawi. Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of or the founder of Zoe Foundation... <laughs> Why are you laughing? Huh? The founder of Zoe Foundation just had the answer wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear about Ethiopia, you be thinking of Eritrea, right? Um, the answer is Eritrea. Where is Eritrea? Is Eritrea? Is Eritrea? Is Eritrea? Besides Kenya. I don't even know that country. Eritrea, I don't know. Eritrea is a country in Africa, one of the 54 African countries. I don't know. Oh my God. Oh my God. You need to travel. One wrong answer. Question number two, your pick. Oh God, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two reads The highest peak in Africa is Mount Cameroon, Mount Zambia, Mount Kupe Maninguba, and Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro. And that was correct. Yeah. <laughs> Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest point in Africa. Now, one correct, one wrong. Question number three. The Mesato is one of Africa's largest open air markets and it's located in the city of Addis Abeba. But in which country is it? Addis Abeba is in which country? I don't even need all the, aid, all the other options you are going to be giving. It's in Ethiopia. Are you going to, are you going to do all these things? You don't have to. Ah, that see? under question there. Correct. Yes. <laughs> that was correct. Ethiopia. Two correct yeah. answers. One wrong. 
let's see let's see let's see if she has the fourth question read which northern nigerian city is the center on which the major caravan routes converge one or a maiduguri b kano c suleja and d kaduna tick tack it's between tick, kano tick, and tick, kaduna tick tack tick tack kano no. and that was the correct answer yeah. <laughs> now we have three correct answers yeah. one wrong. i am an african please <laughs> now question number five do this <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> question number five reads question number five which state in africa is most populous should i read the answers Lagos State. Hmm? No, no. Which state? As in which country? Ah, which country? Most popular. Most populous. Populous. That is the most populated. Populated. Oh, that would be Nigeria. Nigeria is the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. We yeah. have four correct answers. One wrong answer. Question number six. You don't have to keep saying one wrong answer. No, you are, you are, you are five. Uh, I know. Five, four, four right, <laughs> one wrong. You know. The one wrong answer breaks my heart. <laughs> Question number six reads: Which are the towns at the either end of the Suez Canal? Which are the towns at the either end of the Suez Canal? A. Sanai and Peninsula cities. B. Lagos and Kaduna. C. Port Said and city of Suez. D. Cairo and Giza. Oh. Cairo and Giza. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that was wrong. Um, I've never ever heard all those you know, words. The, the, the right answer is Port Set and City of Swiss. Let's write question number seven. Ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> I know you're someone who don't, you don't like I to don't feel like it. Failure at all. Which countries have parts of their boundaries in Lake Victoria? Which countries? Mm -hmm. have parts of their boundaries in Lake Victoria. A. Cameroon, Nigeria, and Chad. B. Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania. C. Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya. D. Tanzania, Nigeria, Kenya. Cameroon, Nigeria, and Chad. Lake Victoria. Huh? Is it not, is it not in Limbe? <laughs> is Limbe, is Limbe in Lake? There is a lake uh, called Lake Victoria. Victoria, where is it? Limbe is a city. Lake Victoria is it's 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 having three countries have their borders that come to the lake, and that and that is B, which is Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. So it is found in the borders, like like every country has a border with, uh, with that on lake. that lake. Yeah. Wow, I should go to that lake. You should. Yeah, it's a very. It's one of the. Yeah, that's one of the biggest lakes in Africa, Lake Victoria. Wow. Okay. Three wrong answers. Uh, four right. Let's see if she is going to make it to the finish line with another correct answer. Now, question number eight. Question number eight. Which is Kenya's biggest port? Kala. Mombasa ports, Kenyatta port, Lumumba port, and Nairobi ports. Which is Kenya's biggest port? A. Mombasa port. B. Kenyatta port. C. Lumumba port. And D. Nairobi port. The answer is A. Mombasa port. And that was the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you had that one correct. Have you ever been to Kenya? I've been to Kenya. You've been to Kenya? Mm -hmm. Okay. On transit, or you went to stay or something? It was a transit, but it took two days. Okay. okay. All right. So did you go to Mombasa? No. Mombasa is, you know, on the other side. It's it's another town away from Nairobi. Okay. They have a very good beach. And you know, I love Kenya. Hey, if you're watching me from Kenya, you know, I just love that country. We love I have so you, many Kenya. friends. So many friends from Kenya, so I love you guys. Now, question number nine. Let's go. Beep, 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 beep. Question number right nine reads. 
Where is Serengeti National Park found? Where is Serengeti National Park found? A. Chad. B. Gabon. C. Cameroon. Of course, it cannot be Cameroon, right? Right, Abby? Mm -hmm. Now, D. Tanzania. D. Tanzania. Ladies and gentlemen, put it up for <laughs> Dennis Agenda. Oh <laughs> that I was correct. So that was correct. Six correct, three wrong. Sorry. Question number 10. I mean, she's already gotten more than 50%, so it's a pass mark. But let's see if she's going to nail it right now. I bet I made it. Question number 10 reads. You had a call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question number 10 reads. Which African city finds a prominent place in the battle song of the U.S. Marines? If you have this answer correct, I will clap for you. A. Monrovia, B. Tripoli, C. Transville, and D. Kigali. Tripoli. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dennis and Janga. She had 7 over 10. How come you had all these correct answers? Very difficult questions like this. How, how do you have... I mean, are you a... Do you learn, do you learn geography in school? Yeah. Right. I did geography in school. You did geography in school. Mm -hmm. And have you been to other African countries? Like, you've traveled to yes. how many other African countries? I've been to Kenya. I've been to Nigeria. And I've had a transit at Addis Ababa, Addis Ethiopia. Ababa. Mm. All right. Well, we're going to US to, to Thailand. Ka to Thailand. Yes. Wow, guys, I think that you guys should travel. I mean, a lot of Africans don't explore Africa. Just take vacation one day. Go to Zanzibar. Go to, go to Benin. Johannesburg. Go to Benin. You know, just go out of your country. And Bozue's Foundation. Are you thinking about Africa, or you just want limited to Cameroon? I'm thinking about Africa. Yes. And if you want to start, which other country will you start first? Nigeria. Nigeria. Why? Because there's population there. No, because I am versed. Okay, because you know yes, Nigeria. I know Nigeria. Which part of Nigeria? Kaduna, Kanu, Potakot? Ido. 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 Um, Port Harcourt. Port uh, yes. Uh, Benin. Benin. Yeah. Wow. So, guys, to all my Nigerian people, how on a day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So guys, uh, we've come to the end of the second section of the show, Discover Africa. And I also want to find out how much of Africa do you know. So how, what was your score? Don't lie to me. Drop in the comment section below. Let me know if you had 7 over 10 like Benis here, or you had less, or you had more. So don't go away. We will be right back after the break with the end or with the last section of the show. Don't smoke my muscle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the last slot of this show. I'm still right here with Miss Benis Ajanga, the founder of Zoe Foundation. Um, see, we've been talking about Zoe Foundation, but I just want to dive into Zoe Foundation itself, right? So I want you to tell us what are the services that you guys offer and how can the population, I mean, anybody that's watching us right now, how can we benefit from your services? Okay, so at Zoe Health Foundation, we have um, general medicine, that's general consultation, mm -hmm. hospitalization, maternity, pre and post natal care. We have surgery, we have physiotherapy, we have dentistry, dental care, and we have a laboratory and a radiology department. Okay. So you can benefit from these services by you know, coming or calling us. We also have a mobile clinic service where you call us you invite us to the comfort of your home your car mm -hmm. your office mm -hmm. and then we come there and we provide your services for you because for those people that cannot keep doctor's appointment because of their busy schedule we can schedule a doctor's appointment for them at the comfort of their office right. so you come to us us in our main branches in our main branch in yasa chadex at duala or the second branch that is at bonaberry deca hotel okay. and we will get you no matter the the health care attention you need, need you are going to get it from from right. either of these right so you guys i mean you, she has already said everything right they have all the different types of medical attention that you may need and they are situated at yasa tradex and also bonaberry uh the numbers are on the screen they have a mobile unit 
so I can just see my house. I'm sick. I call you. Yes. You come. Um, is that costly? How much is that going to cost me? <laughs> um, for the mobile clinic service, it depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. So we we'll charge you for transportation, transportation per day until the end of your treatment. Okay. And then, but the rest of the services, the the, the price is the same. It's the same. Yes. Can I can I come and treat myself on Boro? Can I, you know, you give credit? No, no, no. <laughs> You know that people are always sick when there's no money. So if there's no money, I cannot come to your office. That's why we have friends and relatives. That's right. the time to call them. Right. Mm. Okay. So guys, the numbers on the screen. You just need to call Zoe Foundation. And Miss Ben is here. Is going to pick your call. She is doing something excellently great for Africa. She is changing the African narrative and rewriting the African script. Now, Miss Ben is, before you go, right? Anybody who comes to my show, you must tell africa something they are all watching us right now so look at africa look at your camera and motivate someone out there okay so i am looking at the most beautiful piece on the planet and yes the one message i carry everywhere is that you should discover your purpose and work in it because as my list monroe said for what purpose is not known abuse is inevitable and before anything was created, there must have been a need for that thing to exist. So instead of trying to fit in where your friends are, or trying to be in a place just to please someone, or limiting yourself to what the community has given you as a definition of who you are, it is better for you to identify your purpose. You can read books that will teach you how to identify your purpose. You can decide to sit on your own and you imagine the things or remember the things that make you happy, the things that you really um, make you contented. And, how, and then you start thinking about how you can use those things, to, to how you can monetize those things. And that's the easiest way for you to, to identify your purpose. Not only will you not be asking for off days and public holidays, but every day is going to be like a public holiday for you because you'll be working in what your hobby is. Wow. Discover your purpose. Mm -hmm. That was the message that I got from that speech. I'm sure you're going to get more from that short, that short choice of, you know, choice of words that was so touching and deep down so thank you so much You're thank welcome. you so much for coming we've come to the end of the show but everybody that comes to my show signs my african board okay. when your signature is on this board it means you are changing the african narrative and you are rewriting the african script mm -hmm. and also by the time you sign this board eh, mm -hmm. we are going to add you to our whatsapp group which is for ceos and people who are doing it big. Yeah. <laughs> so which country are you going to sign on Kenya. On Kenya. Um, where is Kenya on the map? You don't forget that Kenya. It's down right? here. Eh? It's around here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put down that signature on Kenya, man. So we foundation. Oh. Wow. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see that? It's on Kenya. So let me tell you what I'll do. Eh? Yeah. I'll do something like this. And on every African country, you're going to have the face of everybody who signed on it. Okay? Wow. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you're going to have your face on Kenya. Mm -hmm. And can you just tell me why you signed on Kenya? I signed on Kenya because I love Kenya. I plan to have my honeymoon in Kenya. Please, can you tell the people? <laughs> can you tell Kenyan people? Kenya. Tell Kenyan people that you love them. I love Kenya so much. I plan to go for my honeymoon in, in Kenya when Mr. Wright shows up. But yes, so, I love so, Kenya. So that now we have a talk to you, nothing about marriage. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so he's just planning for a honey, honeymoon in, in Kenya. In Kenya, guys. they have long giraffes. Oh my God. Let me help you people. Her number is going to be here. This is number here on the screen. Contact her, not for any other thing, though, for Zoe Foundation. That's Zoe what, Foundation. I'm selling Zoe, Zoe Foundation here. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. But if you want to come down for something else, that's, that's, your, pro that's your problem. It's so yours. thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Me. I'm just so happy to have you. Thank you. And I want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing, keep inspiring Africa, and keep changing the state. Mm, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Africa. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Africa. <laughs> those are the words from Janda Dennis Ajanga. Right? Those are the words from her. So, guys, if you're watching me from Africa, from anywhere in Africa, and 
just tell me did you enjoy the show drop in the comment section below if there is anything that we missed out or that you want to probably reach out to zoe foundation the numbers are on the screen you can contact them if you want to do any kind of partnership if you want to sponsor them if you want to invest anything that you want just contact zoe foundation this is the owner the founder this is her number directly you'll be talking to her not some kind of sexy or whatever mm. just because you're watching this show right so that's what i do here on the business in africa youtube channel i try to promote african businesses to the world as much as possible that's what i'm using this platform for right so if you're out there and you want to be a guest on my show my hands are open just contact my numbers they're on the screen they're in the description box below and come right here let's schedule a shoot i welcome everybody Small businesses, big ones, whatever you are doing, so long as you are impacting Africa, then contact me. Let's schedule a show. Don't go away if this is your first time. Click on the subscribe button to join the Business in Africa YouTube community and keep coming back for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Adios. Bye bye. One love, Africa. One love. Africa. One love.